Nicknamed the Son of the Blackbird, the SR-72 has remained largely shrouded in secrecy. But now, with public confirmation scarce, recent developments suggest the pieces are starting to align. There are growing reports indicating that Lockheed Martin's secretive skunk works may have already moved the SR-72 into low-rate production. So the big question remains, is it really happening? Let's explore what we know so far and whether this spy plane is close to becoming a reality. The story of the SR-72 began in 2006 when Lockheed Martin, through its Skunk Works division, quietly started developing this new hypersonic aircraft as a successor to the famous SR-71 Blackbird. At the time, it was a secret project hidden from public view. It wasn't until 2013 that the company officially announced the SR-72 project. Brad Leland, Lockheed Martin's hypersonics program manager, spoke openly about the potential of this aircraft, describing it as a game-changer for military aviation. In his words, hypersonic aircraft coupled with hypersonic missiles could penetrate denied airspace and strike at nearly any location across a continent in less than an hour. Speed is the next aviation advancement to counter emerging threats in the next several decades. The technology would be a game-changer in theater, similar to how stealth is changing the battle space today. And yes, speed is everything here. The aircraft is expected to fly at speeds above Mach 5, thanks to its innovative turbine-based combined cycle or TBCC engine technology. To understand how it works, let's break down the two main components of the TBCC engine. First, the turbofan engine operates at lower speeds, much like the engines found in modern fighter jets such as the F-15 or F-16. This part of the engine allows the SR-72 to take off from a standstill and accelerate to supersonic speeds which range between Mach 1 and Mach 3. However, to achieve hypersonic speeds, more advanced technology is required. This is where the second part of the engine comes into play, the dual-mode ramjet, or scramjet. Once the aircraft reaches around Mach 3, the ramjet activates, using the massive airflow and pressure generated by flying at such high speeds. Unlike turbofan engines, which have rotating parts to compress air, the ramjet relies on the shock waves produced by the aircraft's speed to compress the air and mix it with fuel, creating a much more powerful thrust. This allows the SR-72 to break through the hypersonic barrier, potentially reaching Mach 6. Just a quick moment before we unveil the rest. If you're new here, consider subscribing to this channel. Stay up to date and never miss out on the latest insights. The combination of the turbofan and the dual-mode ramjet is what makes the TBCC engine so revolutionary. It provides the flexibility to operate efficiently at both low and extremely high speeds, giving the aircraft a significant advantage. And in modern warfare, speed is critical. The ability to rapidly access real-time information is crucial, and traditional intelligence-gathering methods, like satellites and drones, have their limitations. Satellites are excellent for capturing detailed images and monitoring global activities, but they follow predictable orbits, making it easier for adversaries to avoid detection. This predictability limits their effectiveness when rapid on-demand intelligence is required. Additionally, there aren't enough satellites to monitor every area of interest at all times. Drones such as the MQ-9 Reaper offer valuable long-duration surveillance but are restricted by their subsonic speeds. Although these drones can remain airborne for over 24 hours, their slower speed means they can't cover vast distances quickly. This is where the SR-72's hypersonic capabilities make all the difference. Now, let's move on and take a look at the evidence that has fueled speculations. By 2017, rumors and reports suggested that Lockheed Martin was getting close to building a prototype known as a Flight Research Vehicle, or FRV. This single-engine demonstrator was said to be designed for testing the advanced propulsion system intended to push the SR-72 to hypersonic speeds. Although no official confirmation has been provided about flight tests of the FRV, eyewitness reports in 2017 claimed that a secret aircraft was seen flying over Palmdale, California, near Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works facility. This added fuel to speculation that the son of the Blackbird was moving closer to reality. There were also some public statements from Lockheed Martin officials regarding the progress of the aircraft. For example, in early 2018, Jack O'Banion, Lockheed Martin's Vice President of Strategy and Customer Requirements, made a significant announcement confirming that the flight research vehicle for the SR-72 had already been tested. However, soon after this, 
all public discussions about the aircraft seemed to disappear. A sudden media blackout surrounded the project, and Lockheed Martin removed all references to the SR-72 from its official communications and website. This abrupt silence led to widespread speculation about the program's fate. One theory is that this change was triggered by a speech delivered by Russian President Vladimir Putin in 2018. In his speech, Putin announced that Russia was developing hypersonic missile systems capable of reaching speeds above Mach 5. These weapons, including the avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle, were described as a new class of technology that could challenge existing missile defenses. This announcement marked the beginning of the modern hypersonic arms race. It is believed that the U.S. government may have responded to Putin's speech by imposing stricter controls on public information related to American hypersonic projects. The reasoning behind this would be to prevent revealing too much about U.S. capabilities in this rapidly evolving field of military technology. Even though the SR-72 seemed to have disappeared from public view, there were clear signs that something was still going on. In 2022, Lockheed Martin reported a $225 million pre-tax loss related to a classified aeronautics program. While the company did not confirm explicitly that this loss was connected to the aircraft, many experts believe the financial challenges are tied to the ongoing development of this highly secretive project. By 2024, the cumulative losses associated with this classified program had risen to $335 million. Given these budget overruns, it's reasonable to assume that the total cost of the program is significantly higher. However, there are also other clues suggesting that a highly classified new aircraft is currently being developed. In 2021, Lockheed Martin completed the construction of Building 648, a new facility at their Skunk Works site in Palmdale. This 215,000 square foot smart factory represents a major investment in the future of advanced aircraft production. Described as an intelligent, flexible factory, Building 648 was designed with the latest technology to streamline the production of cutting-edge airframes. Lockheed Martin incorporated artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and advanced robotic systems, making it one of the most advanced aerospace manufacturing facilities in the world. The use of large, multifunctional robots such as the Combined Operation Bolting and Robotic Auto Drill Systems, or COBRAs, is a key feature of this facility. These robots can perform tasks like assembling aircraft components with extreme precision. This automation helps reduce both time and cost in producing high-end aircraft, allowing Lockheed Martin to scale production more efficiently. Between March 2018, when the SR-72 program became more secretive, and September 2023, Lockheed Martin expanded its Advanced Development Programs unit by an impressive 75% adding over 2,000 new employees in this five-year period. There is speculation that Building 648 is already being used for low-rate production of the son of the Blackbird. In a 2022 interview, John Clark, the general manager of Skunk Works, mentioned that low-rate production activities were underway at the Palmdale site. Although he did not specify which aircraft were being produced, Clark's statements have led many to believe that the SR-72, or at least a part of its development, is taking place at this new facility. Clark emphasized that Skunk Works is not just a rapid prototyping hub, but also a manufacturing center for operational airframes like the SR-71 and F-117. His comments suggest that Skunk Works is now producing something more than just prototypes, reinforcing the idea that the program may be moving forward. So, over the past several years, Rumors and circumstantial evidence have continued to suggest that the SR-72 may be progressing toward low-rate production. Although the program became highly secretive after 2018, the timeline for the SR-72 still seems plausible, especially considering the financial investments and new facilities that have been observed in recent years. Looking forward, it's possible that the aircraft could enter service by 2030, as originally estimated by Lockheed Martin executives like Brad Leland. While there is no concrete proof that the SR-72 is in full production, the mounting evidence suggests that it is closer to reality than many might think.